Hey, this is Nutter, and today we're going to be doing an Untitled. Seemed the most appropriate, considering everything that's going on. We've got rank battles, clan battles, 8.7 round 2 testing with significant A adjustments. I'm going to go into that. And then on top of all of this, the French legendary commander has received some nerfs while testing has gone on in 8.7. So I'm going to cover all of that, share my thoughts, opinions on all of it, and more. Hopefully you enjoy. Now, the game in the background is myself in the tier 9 French DD Mogador. We are in a rank battle. 6v6. There have been a metric butt ton of DDs in rank battle. And take advantage of my build. This is the build I've been using exclusively on my French DDs to extreme effect. Now, my opening, I decided to go A, which was super far away. Our team's going to BC Strat. My plan is free take if they don't go here. If they do go here, I have the skills to mitigate incoming damage and maximize my throughput damage towards the enemy. And sure enough, we run smack into a black. He's going to do his smoke radar build, and I'm trying to put so much pressure on him that he can't afford to stay stationary for too long. We do take significant damage, but we give way more than we get. Now... Rank play has been pretty successful for me. I'm up to rank 5, and I think I had like a 10 or 11 game win streak in this ship. And if it wasn't a win streak, I could save my star. So I think I lost a star once the entire time I was playing in the tier 9 rank bracket. And that was just because I was out of position, I misplayed, I didn't do enough objective control, damage on DDs, damage on battleships in order to save my star. But generally, the Mogador dominates. It has great firepower, main battery reload, perfect for assassinating DDs. And on North America, there is an overabundance in the current meta. I don't know how the other server regions are dealing with it, but we are averaging three to four DDs in a 6v6. It's kind of ridiculous, but I love it because I am so good at anti-DD work. Both me and the ship itself. The ship, I know, I want to take a little bit of credit, but the ship does most of it. I'm so fast, I can catch up to all of them. Main battery reload does a ton of damage. Base capture, you know, it does everything well. I carry nearly 80 or 90% of the games. I'm top on my team. So that's a save the star guarantee. It's just really well-crafted tool for my play style. So I'm having a blast in rank. Rank's been going great. If you're dealing with the Mogador, you need high gun velocity as the DDs. You need to keep him spotted. Don't hide yourself in smoke unless you absolutely have to. If the Mogador is sailing towards you, you need to retreat. If he's running away, you need to try and catch up to him to keep him spotted for all of the support ships to fire. You yourself don't go after him until you can verify that, oh yeah, I can. we can kill him. He's, he's, he's low enough. We got him. We got him. Uh, but if you can't guarantee that, he's going to kill you because main battery reload is that powerful. So just be careful. Highly recommend French and Soviet battleships, cruisers, DDs for their high gun velocity. Obviously, there's only one French DD and you're looking at it, so, you know, hopefully you can find success. Good luck, guys. Now, let's talk about how clan battles have been going so far for me. This is my first clan season, and I have enjoyed it immensely. Now, I'm someone who is very, by the book, do your job, we'll all succeed, we'll all be happy. But I'm not happy when I see team members who aren't working together, especially in a team game. So stuff like a, uh, you know, refusing to focus fire or, you know, comms are a little heavy with communication that isn't relevant, uh, that really drives me up the wall because I'm a competitive person and it's just something that shouldn't happen, but it's something that always happens. I mean, every guild, clan, division, party, whatever you've ever been in, there's always a line that you have to keep. Do you want to be super chill or do you want to make progression? I like to try and get progression while staying chill sometimes. But I'm not chill normally until the job is done. And I think that's appropriate given that everyone's donating their time, you know. It's a precious commodity. So you don't want to waste it by losing games that you shouldn't lose or by blowing someone's ears up to the point where they have no interest in participating, right? And it's very easy to go f past that. I go past that all the time and, you know, I'm not being critical of individual people. 
but at the start of our clan battles the other day, it was a little bit... We weren't in command of the team. We weren't focused firing together. We weren't making the right calls to work and win. And it showed. We, we didn't have the kind of success that I was expecting. But as we played and got back into the rhythm, it worked out very well. The one thing that's kind of weird for me, and, uh, you know, people who've done it for a while, it's not weird for you, but the, the very limited schedule window that you can do this activity, and for certain days to be an off period for clan is very weird. Friday being off is, is a very weird day for me, considering that would be peak time to do something, either in real life or <laughs> otherwise. I figure they probably give it off as just a, this is your day off, please take a Friday and go to a movie or something like that. But clan battles is cool. I like the team strategy. I like trying to help people recognize the tactics that are gonna work against this person just through my experience of the game. I can apply that to a great degree of success. So clan has been going very well. I'm running with RKN on North America. I'm predominantly using the Cossack. And I love the concealment. I love its acceleration, the British acceleration. The use of the smoke allows you to sort of disengage quickly without taking too much damage. And boy, they do a lot of damage in competitive. I'm always impressed by the amount of great players on these teams. It's really created a lot of back and forth, a lot of, honestly, challenge, and I love challenge. Don't normally have the most challenging opponents, but in clan battles, yeah, they're good. They are equal in skill, and it's very rewarding to have to deal with the so the chess match. Now, let's talk about 8.7 round 2 testing. This is AA changes. This is very, very significant to what I have shared with you all. The AA change video in 8.7 that I posted probably a week ago at this point, it showed off a bug. And it was highlighting the changes to the priority sector. There's going to be an instant component and then a continuous ramp up in damage. Then it goes on cooldown. That instant component is supposed to be 3.5% health of the squadron, and then obviously the continuous, and obviously it's modified through Fierce Fire and all that stuff. Well, Wargaming didn't really plan to reintroduce the layering of AA, prior to 8.7, AA with the rework has been long range only aura, medium range only aura, and then short range only aura. So some auras would have higher or lower and you would be trying to work to keep the aircraft in the mid-range or your long range if you had a superior AA there. They changed it. It stacks on each other. And when they changed that it stacks on each other, they didn't put any protections for the instant component of priority sector stacking on each other. So what was happening when I was pressing my priority sector and the enemy air was in my mid-range, it would do 3.5% for long range and 3.5% for mid-range. So it would do 7% if I was on a cruiser or a battleship, and theoretically 10% if I was a DD. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. Basically double the damage that you should be doing. Uh, clearly, they needed to fix that, and uh, they fixed it. So now it's capped at 3.5 for cruisers and battleships, and then DDs at 5%. You can't double your damage by waiting until you're mid-range. So, it's a good adjustment. Obviously, a Zao with Fierce Fire shooting down literally everything, it felt kind of broken. And thankfully, Wargaming watches every video I put out. And someone spied it and used that information to correctly assess exactly what was wrong. And I, I got even a reference in the CC announcement. It was like, well, we, we're having this AA issue, just so you guys know. If you were to, oh, I don't know, take a Zao out and use priority sector with your mid-range. When the enemy's in your mid-range, it's gonna do mid-range and long-range. Wow, hmm, where, who, who's used a Zao before? I don't know how that goes. So yeah, they protected this. And then it's compensation for the increase in damage output. A lot of squadrons have increased in their sizes. Just across the board. Hermes, Furious, Hosho, Ryojo, Shokaku, Langley, Ranger, Expect more changes. We'll have to obviously really dial in the balance, but that's currently what's going on on the public test server. I hope to get another video out, very similar video of my impressions, 
But that's what was the reason I was doing so well is because I was timing it up right, I guess, and it was just in a double layer. It still is supposed to do more damage, so Wargaming will still have to refine it. So just hold tight. Hopefully, cross our fingers that this will be it. This is how AA is going to be better, you know, whatever that is. <laughs> I'm just hoping, and I'm, I'm a realist. I, I, they haven't fixed it yet. Why would they fix it here, right? Maybe they will. Maybe this is the patch where AA is fixed and everything is awesome. We'll see. Now, let's get to the elephant in the room. The French legendary commander is receiving multiple nerfs. And this is after testing an 8.7 reveal and it was just too powerful. First nerf, fully armed. This is the devastating strike heroic achievement proc that reduced the reload or improved the reload by 10% on your main armament. It's capped at 5% now, but you can earn it multiple times. So it can't be ridiculous like it, like it was testing 20, 30, 40% with three and four devastating strikes, but it can get high enough that you notice it and benefit from it. So I'm, I'm okay with this change. It, it feels like a healthy adjustment considering I can't think of another passive that would increase the reload so high with uncapped trait like that. So I'm okay with that. The speed and composure skill. This is the one that was 1 million potential damage tanked would become 5% greater maximum speed. It has been nerfed and now requires 2 million potential damage, which means it's basically only going to proc once. At 1 million potential damage, it could have basically proc three times, two or three times. The faster you are to, the harder you are to hit, obviously. So it's sort of a cascade effect. But with 2 million potential damage, it's basically only proc once. You're never going to tank 4 million. Never. And that's where I feel that Wargaming, maybe 1.5 million would have been more fair. At least that way, 3 million, it's a possibility. You could get it to proc twice. But at 2 million, it's only going to proc once. You'd just be happy with the one time it procs, honestly. Now, one thing that's kind of confusing is the speed boost from Speed and Composure. They, they describe it as being reduced from 10% to 8%. So that's the proc that happens when you tank potential damage. But it was advertised at 5%. So was it 10%? Was there some silly 10% 1 million potential damage going on on the public test server and I wasn't a part of this? He's saying that I could have gone like 80 knots in the water relatively easy? Now, you, now that's gone. Clearly it's gone. So I was just kind of confused by this 10% to 8%. So if it's 8% when you proc 2 million potential damage, then it ends up being only a 2% nerf compared to the 1 million. And the 1 million is much easier to get a third and a fourth. So I guess for the health of the game and the stacking part of it, it, it was the most powerful legendary commander. That's what I heard. So I'm happy they protected it. Kind of wish the 1 million was 1.5, but you know, whatever. We're cool with it. I'm excited to get them in my inventory. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out more of my content, you can click the most recent and the most relevant uploads. You could also choose to subscribe to my channel. We do daily World of Warship videos, first impression, how to, news, and review related. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. Take advantage of that. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you. Have a wonderful day and I'll catch you next time.